I'm Emma G. Rose. I'm Shell Shearer. We're indie authors. And this is Indie Book Talk. Hello and welcome back to Indie Book Talk. Today we have Gerald Rice, who is the author of Absolute Garbage, Total Nonsense, and Utter Ridiculousness. No, I'm not being mean. That's the name of the book. Welcome to the show, Gerald. Thank you for having me. My first question is, why that title? Because, you know, it's kind of self-deprecating <laughs> in, in some way. <laughs> yes. Intentional. Intentional. Look, look I, I wanted to set the bar so far as expectations before anybody picked up the book, downloaded it. I wanted you to know, hey, look, you're going to be getting some things that when you read, you're like, okay, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I'll say to a certain degree that, you know, this is uh, an experiment. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I believe in all the stories, but I also acknowledge that not all the stories are the best stories. And that's intentional, actually. It, it's, it's really supposed to be a progression of where I was as a writer at the time that I wrote that particular story. You know, the oldest story I wrote when I was in eighth grade. And wow. it's, it's groaningly terrible. But, you know, <laughs> that's where I was when I was, uh, what, 13 years old. That's, that's where I was. That, that was the kind of story that I could write back then. The, the part that really makes me cringe is the poetry I wrote when I was in high school. That That's really, really cringeworthy. But that's oh, where yeah. I was. High school poetry. That's that's harsh. That's that's where I was then. And so that's where the title was. You know, I, I think I got some stuff in there that, that's good, that, that's memorable, that people would like. But it was really just a, a bunch of screenshots of where I was at that point in my life when I wrote it. So did you put them in order of... Writing so you can see the progression of your writing or are they scattered or how did you do it? It's more scattered because I didn't want to hit somebody right off the top with a horrible story. And then they just check out like, I'm not reading the rest of that. You know, I I wanted to have something that was, uh, you know, had a little bit more, a little bit more fat on it that they could chew on. And the story I wrote in eighth grade is near the back. And the poems I wrote in high school are the very last entries, putting it in chronological order sounded like the worst, seemed like the worst idea possible. <laughs> so this is almost like a memoir in literature. Like we, we're doing a Benjamin Button style memoir kind of backwards through your life. And we're doing it not by hearing what's actually happening in your life, but by hearing what you were writing at the time. Yes. And the funny thing about it is, is as I was pulling stuff out of folders, out of email, and as I'm looking at some of this stuff, especially the poetry, I was like, wow, that that is kind of informative that I was going through a thing at the time that I didn't even realize. Mm-hmm. Because I've since, uh, in 2019, I was diagnosed with uh, anxiety and depression. And, and my therapist said, you know, you probably have been dealing with this for a significant portion of your life. And so with that in mind, once I dug up these old poems in particular, it's like, wow, I really was going through something when I wrote this. I thought I was just, you know, writing a creative poem. But no, it was more than that because it was it was it was a kind of reflection of me. It's just I didn't even know it at the time. Well, I actually I did the look inside thing on on Kindle, which I do a lot, so I can see, you know, who I'm talking to before we start. And I read the first story in this okay. book. And I, I don't want to, I'm afraid to talk about it because I don't want to spoil anything, but it was surprisingly entertaining. <laughs> like the setup, I was kind of like, wait, what is this just like an office drama? And then the deeper we got into it, the more I was like, what is happening? This what, is was that, uh, wild. <laughs> as I was putting this together last year, I already had the idea to, to, to assemble it in uh, 2020, but I was taking my time about it. And I got really serious about it last year. And I kept saying to myself, okay, I'm done. No more. And then I was like, oh, but I got this really cool idea. It would only take me a day or two to write it. I did that about four (laughs) or five times. And the very last time was branch manager. I got that idea. What if it was a branch manager and the the manager was actually vegetation? (laughs) It was like, what if it literally was a branch manager? And that's, that's where that came from. And, and, uh, um, you know, I, I listened to several podcasts and one of the podcasts I listened to is the Bechdel cast. And that really informed me because it was, you know, as a man, it was something that I, I never seriously gave consideration to that women don't have voices in a lot of media, female characters, rather. 
they only have a lot of voices in, in media. And I was like, well, okay, well, how about I make the main two characters women? And they're talking to each other. You know, they might talk about a significant other or a man, but that's not the thrust of their conversations. So that th- their interplay was really what the main focus of the story was because the manager doesn't really come into play significantly in for, for, for the bulk of the story. Because he's a tree. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I, re- I really wanted to have that as like an aside. And really, uh, I'm trying to remember. Sometimes I think that I do things that I don't actually do. But yeah, I think uh, I think I did put in there that that the manager is even female. Like, so it's it's essentially a story full of women. Well, yes. and a tree. That's the like. It took me it took me a good chunk of the story to realize that when you said tree, you didn't just mean oh, this is a manager who's like boring or wooden <laughs> or or you know rooted in their ways. No, literal vegetation, <laughs> right. and I loved it. I want to bring us kind of back around though because you did mention you know, you had this struggle with anxiety and depression. And one of the things we wanted to talk to you about was this idea of writing without excuses. So like, do you find that your anxiety and depression creates barriers for you to write? Or do you find that it creates inspiration or a little bit of both? Both. Um, I would say more of a barrier in that if I'm feeling anxious, Sometimes it's hard for me to sit down and settle on one thing when, when you have it. We all have anxiety. We all everybody does to a certain degree. It's just, you know, the depending on how well your brain allows you to deal with it. But for me, mm-hmm. if I'm feeling anxiety, I'm thinking about the things I need to do. And I'm also thinking about, well, what am I not thinking of that I also need to do and having my 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 attention or spread so thinly it's hard for me to sit down and focus on one thing i might sit down with a story and try to write and i you know i can only get a dozen or so words in because my mind is so many other places so yeah sometimes but sometimes also i might feel anxiety and like i haven't written anything in a while i gotta sit down and i gotta focus but i i have this thing so far that i've been pretty successful at where i've written a story every month, a short story every month. I want I want to submit to anthologies and other things. And on top and on top of that, I'm also working on a novella. And you know, the story that I'm working on for this month, because I got done so early in March, I had a couple of days to spare in the month. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and leap into the April story. And I had written about 600 words. And then about a week or so ago, it had been at least a week since I'd written anything in it. Mm -hmm. And I just sat down in bed and I wrote 800 words and, you know, I'd more than doubled the word count. So it really is a matter of where the anxiety is applying itself. So do your works um, involve like depression and anxiety or do you write about completely different types of things? You, You know, as, as I'm becoming more aware of how it affects me, it is coming more intentionally into my writing, you know, whereas before, like I was saying earlier, uh, I was writing about things in poems without realizing it was a reflection of what I was experiencing at that time. Now I am starting to be a little bit more intentional about it because you make a more realistic character. If you draw upon things that are really going on around you, things you are seeing, things you are experiencing. So I want to have a character who has anxiety and depression, not every single character, because then you would get repetitive, but you can do aspects. I would say I use myself as a template and I take bits and pieces, not everything, but I take bits and pieces to incorporate into the character because I can flesh that character out a little bit more, but I, I do, I do start with myself. So, cause that's what I know I'm writing from what I know. That's what you should do. You should write from what you know. Well, at least 15 plus years ago, I stopped trying to write stories set in Los Angeles because I've never been to Los Angeles. Why would I write a story there? Mm. I write stories centered around where I live. If, if a location is important at all, the location is here because there are interesting things in my neighborhood. There's interesting things in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. There's interesting things in everybody's neighborhoods. So long as you have an eye to identify those things. So what type of genres do you write in? I mean, we've met, you've mentioned short stories and novels, but what type of stories? Do you Primarily write? horror, 
that comes strictly from my mother being a horror fan. She was a humongous Stephen King fan. Every time he had a new novel <laughs> come out, she would always get it in hard hardcover. Uh, I was in kindergarten when Creep Show came out, and I remember getting out of school, and she was waiting there in the parking lot with a friend from work, and the three of us went to the theater and we saw Creep Show. You know, I'm like five years old <laughs> watching, oh watching. More, watching this completely inappropriate horror movie for a five year old, I loved it. <laughs> and her friend, was, her friend was so terrified that she covered her face until she went to sleep. And I'm trying to pull her hand down, like, "Oh, look at this part! Look at this part!" Then blood splashes all over the screen, or something like that. <laughs> and for whatever reason, that memory sticks out more. But um, when I looked up Creep Show and The Howling on IMDb, I realized The Howling came out before Creep Show, And I saw that. I remember seeing that in the theater because I remember sitting in the theater with my brother. And we saw that. So I was seeing all kinds of movies that I should not have been seeing. But my mother really fostered that love of horror movies in me. And uh, when I was in seventh grade, she put the first book in my hands that I read for uh, enjoyment. You know, I read Stephen King's Eyes of the Dragon. It's not a horror novel, but I mean, it is Stephen King. It was that. And, and, you know, once she put that book in my hands, then, you know, I started going to the bookstore and buying books and reading horror. And it, and it went from me reading stories and wishing that characters went left instead of right or they did this instead of that to me starting to write stories where I had people doing things that I wanted them to do and once that seed was in me, it just grew into eventually me writing. It started absolutely with my mother and it started absolutely with horror. Now, do you have any strategies or um, thoughts about how to keep yourself writing? You know, you've talked about like you had that a week where you weren't writing and you thought, oh no, I need to go back to this. Do you have any strategies to share with writers who are struggling to maintain some sort of schedule? We live in this beautiful digital age where we have so much at our disposal that we could be using and, and many times aren't. I use Google Drive. I write my first draft in Google Docs. And I do that because I can be on my laptop and I can write or I can be on my phone and I can write. I can't always take my laptop everywhere with me. I can still have my phone. And say if I'm waiting in the waiting room at the dentist's office or something like that, if I'm thinking about it, I can just open that Google Docs app, pull up the story that I've been working on, and I can just tack out some words while I'm there. I don't think I could type on that tiny little screen. I mean, I know they're bigger now, but they're but, still. Yeah, well, I, I, I have a tiny <laughs> iPhone, but you know, I, I've adjusted. I've adjusted. If typing with your thumbs isn't convenient, you could also also use the dictation feature while you're in the app. It's it's not a hundred percent. You know, maybe it's about ninety five percent where it hears certain words that you're not saying, and you have to go back and you have to correct it. You, uh, if you're really motivated, you can really knock out a lot of words while you're dictating. Um, I, I remember um, I wrote, um, I want to say, uh, a 2,000 word short story in a week, primarily while I was walking my dog. And you know, in a couple of days, I had a first draft, and then I worked on redrafting it. And and I'd written it probably at 90 plus percent of it by dictating it in my phone. I, I wasn't really using my thumbs at all. The, the other thing that, that I use to make myself accountable, well, two things. Draft a schedule so that first you put in the things that you have to get done, the things that you absolutely cannot, cannot get around, things you have to do. And then the rest is putting in the things that you want to do. You want to spend time with your significant other, or maybe you want to see that TV show that you love at eight o'clock or you know things like that. And just make sure, identify those pockets where you realize, I don't really have anything going on. So maybe at that time, maybe for that 30 minutes, that hour, I can put in time to write. Uh, and the other thing that I do is uh, I created a, a, a spreadsheet. Say I want to write a 50,000 word novel or something like that. I can say, well, I want to get this novel written in two months. So in two months, that means I need to write X amount of words per day. Each day, each day that passes, I'll update the word count for that date. And say, okay, well, 
I wrote this many words. And a lot of times, honestly, I was short. And I say, okay, well, I'm short on this this day. Maybe I can have a, a day where I can be really aggressive, where I can kind of, kind of for one day, push aside some of the other things that I need to get done so I can focus more on writing. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot of good strategies put into place for making sure you get words on paper. Yeah. And, and, and life definitely happens. You know, there, there, I definitely had to give myself some extensions, like, you know, because things, things, things do occur. I'm laughing because I'm in the midst of, of a novel that I've given myself like five extensions. <laughs> it's gotten, it's gotten silly. <laughs> So, you know, really what, what that spreadsheet does, it, 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 it tells you the truth. Mm. It's like, Hey, despite what you wanted to do, this is what you actually did. And, you know, you can do something about it. You can either say, Hey, you know what? This is the best I can do. This is what I'm going to continue to do. Or you can say, Hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe I can delete that game off my phone so I can focus more on writing. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe I can, uh, maybe not watch that binge watch that show that I've been waiting on or something like that. At least until after Wait, I'm done. You're saying project. that playing Wordle and watching Star Trek doesn't count as writing. Oh man. <laughs> that's, that's the inspiration oh. for writing. The app that was the killer for me was plants versus zombies. I finally <laughs> had to delete that, that. That is a time suck. That is where branch manager came from. You, you know what? It might not. Speaking of time sucks, do you have social media? And if so, where can people find you on the interwebs? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Gerald Rice. I am on Instagram at Red Hand Books. Uh, I'll, I'll be talking about whatever it is I'm writing or whatever thought that pops into my brain at the time. <laughs> awesome. Well, I. Uh... I hope that you're going to continue with your short storytelling because I'm I'm quite delighted by absolute garbage, total nonsense, and utter ridiculousness. Thank you for being on the show. We appreciate you sharing your tips for actually getting words on paper. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs>